Hey, hey, everybody, regular guy barbecue. Guess what? Spring has finally sprung here in Wisconsin. It's a beautiful day out. Most of our snow is melted. It's gonna be like 50 degrees today. So my old bones said, you know what? It's time to go barbecue. So we're here to barbecue today. Now, this one, it's gonna be something that, you know, you guys know how I usually get some sort of a, um, inspiration from another video that I watch, somebody else's recipe, I make it my way, that kind of thing. I'm shooting from the hip on this one, gang, okay? This one, we are gonna name, and we have no idea how in the hell it's gonna turn out, but we're gonna find out. This is gonna be our four meat pineapple stew, okay? So check this out, right down here. Now we've got several cuts of beef here. We've got uh, our choice beef shanks, and we've got some soup bones, right? We've got some bacon that we're gonna be putting in, and just for a little sneak peek, we got some bacon thick cut smoking on the grill right now. We're gonna take care of that in a minute. We've also got some chorizo and some kielbasa. Now, we did add another member to the family over the winter time that you haven't seen yet. So come on over this way. And this is a vertical smoker. Now these come in electric styles, propane styles, doggy style. No, that's not right. No, 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 no. Um, but this one is a stick burner, charcoal burner, if you will. It's got several levels to it. Your charcoal burns down here. You've got several places for meat and or the water tray in there and then you've got your top where your smoker stack is and today we're going to be putting uh the shanks and the stew meats and those things the chorizo and the sausage on there the kielbasa we're going to put those on there and probably smoke them for a good i want to say the neighborhood an hour and a half maybe two hours at about 250 degrees and the only thing we're going to do to prep any of this stuff at all as you can see, we've got it out here in the sun, and these are getting close to room temperature. I don't know which room we're in. Which room are we in besides the our room. own mine? Anyway, they're getting warmed. We like to cook them at room temperature, about 70 degrees, before we actually cook any kind of beef. That's what we do. Uh, the only preparation we're going to do is we have a little bit of seasoning that we mixed up. Okay, and that's, you know, your, your peppers, your garlic powders, your onions, your paprika, that kind of thing. Just a little bit we're going to put on these before we put them on the smoker. Now the kielbasa and the chorizo and all that, you've seen us do that before. So we didn't figure we'd spend too much time on that stuff. Until it gets time to put the dish together. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Bunga bunga. <laughs> now these kind of remind me of being a caveman. These actually have the bone in. Okay, now this is a, a beef it. shank. You can see it's a relatively tough cut of meat. And it's got the bone right in there, you see. Hello, tough bone. And then this is this is literally just beef soup bones. Okay. Now normally these don't have a lot of meat on them, that kind of thing. So I mean it's literally just a bone with a little tough meat on it. And usually you'd throw these in a soup or a stew or things like that. We're gonna smoke them. Why not? So literally we're just gonna, you know, just like we always do, relatively simple seasoning for when we're doing beef. We do steaks kind of the same way. A lot of people say, oh my god, you didn't put salt in there. Well, as we've covered in other videos, and maybe you haven't seen them yet, but we'll cover it again briefly. This old fart's got a bad ticker. So we try to cut back on our sodium as much as we can. And to be honest with you, when it comes to barbecue, we add a lot of other flavors. You've seen some of the crazy stuff we've put in some of our dry rubs and things. Most times, more often than not, I am going to skip putting salt into things. Now, whether that be because we're using some sort of a broth or a brine that already has salt in it, things that have ketchup, like in our barbecue sauces that we make, they have soft salt in them already. So a lot of that stuff doesn't need that extra salt. Rare occasions when I do make a dry rub for a pork, possibly for a poultry, I will add some salt to those just to help crisp up that skin on the outside. That's what we do. So, all right. So, we're going to put these in on the rack. I'm going to show you what it looks like once we get them in there, and then it's going to be a while. So, we'll instantaneously show you this by the magic of TV. Uh, the rest of it's going to take us probably about two hours. So.
All right, back in we go with slow-mo. So now we've put two levels in here. we put our beef shanks and all that on the bottom down there. Because those are a little thicker. They'll take a little longer to cook. Shanks for asking. Shanks, shanks for asking. That's right. The chorizo <laughs> obviously needs to cook in the pan, but that'll go relatively quick. And the kielbasa is already cooked, but we want to add the smoke flavor to it. Which reminds me... <clears throat> We'll put the lid on, get this thing up to temperature again, and go from there. But which reminds me, we almost forget it. Something. What did we forget it? I don't know. I don't... You, were, you don't remember what we forget it? No, that's why I forgot it. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's why I forget it, too. Oh, yum yum wood. Yum yum wood. Or num num wood, you say. Either way. Danielle says this is called num num wood, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to add a little bit of num num wood. Now, see this smoker, although that door is a little smaller than I'd like it to be, it does do the job. We're going to just throw a little num num wood right there on the fire. Get in there, you jerk. There we are. So we're at about 275 degrees right now. We're going to bring the temperature down a little bit. Look at that. Check out that bacon. That bacon's going nice, huh? Ooh, oh yeah. Yeah. And we, we didn't start with any num num wood in here. We did start with some apple, a chunk, a big chunk of apple off our old apple tree in the uh, vertical smoker. And so we started with that. Now we have a little more. We didn't start with any num num wood in here. So we had some num num wood to give it that smoky flavor. And there we go. So now we sit and wait. Gotta but say, you huh? Gotta say, I kind of miss having the apple tree because when we have applewood <laughs> all the time for free. We had all the applewood we could use, and unfortunately, we're down to about a third of the tree left. So, but that's all right. You know, it, it went to good use and all that. So, all right, we'll clean up. We'll get some stuff moving. Num num wood's going. Smoke's going. Um, when you see the thing go, brrr, then you'll know that we're getting ready to do the next step. So. While we're sitting here waiting for everything to happen, it's like watching paint dry. For those of you that are new to the channel, we just wanted to cover some of the things that we use and some of the things that we do here, some of the things we buy and the equipment that we have, and just to recap some of this stuff. So if you take a look over here to my right, to your left, or your left and right, this is Frankencart. Now this is uh, something that I built because I needed a cart that was taller so I could actually not bend over and kill my back when I'm cutting things up and whatnot. Uh, this was actually a dollar table from an, a garage sale and another thing that we bought at a garage sale for a dollar that we cut into pieces and bolted it all together and put some wheels on it and made franken cart. So that's our prep cart. Over here we've got King Kong. This is our 22 inch performance Weber grill, Weber kettle grill. Uh, we got this at a garage sale or off marketplace actually it was uh, for 50 bucks and it looked like it was used once when we got it. It's a fantastic grill. If you want to have the ability to do different kinds of things, smoking meats, grilling meats, high temperature, low and slow, anything you want to do, and you only want to have one grill, these things are phenomenal. So, this is the newest addition that we talked about a little bit earlier in the video. This is a vertical smoker, stick burner, charcoal burner, whatever you want to call it. This one's been slightly modified. It has extra thermometers in it, so you can monitor your temperatures a little bit better. First time I've used one of these, first time I've used this one, so far it's holding temperature amazingly. For 20 bucks, it was a little dirty. Uh, by the way, those again, those of you that are relatively new to our channel, we do have a name for just about everything that we use. Uh, I have plans for this. It's gonna be a while. It'll be a video. It'll be on a video, but we're gonna show you this. But I'm gonna do this right now for you. A uh, little, qu little question and answer for you, maybe a little guessing game, and maybe we'll even give away a prize. So you watch this video, you see this vertical smoker. If you can guess, so by some cosmos of your imagination, guess what we're going to do with this smoker and what we're going to name it when it's done. We'll give you a shout out, we'll shoot you a prize, all right? Now something we don't use very often, we haven't done any videos on it yet, but we have the ability to, is our fire pit. And normally we just burn wood in here and sit around the fire pit and you know talk smack to each other and kick each other in the foot and um, but we do have the ability to cook on here we are going to do a, a video this summer cooking over the open pit i'm looking forward to that but that's in the future now come on back this way to our shed this is our smoker shed that we bought last summer put it together ourselves three days of hell uh, yeah <laughs> you can see we keep a lot of our equipment in here we've got pans we've got foils we've got Plastics, we got this, we got that. A lot of the cast iron that we've picked up over the years hangs on the wall here, just waiting to be used. All of our utensils, rack of spices, cutting boards, other utensils. So called Steve Austin, we got that up there. Stuff over here, paint brushes and whatnots for doing that. And then we got a cooler back there. Of course, you guys have seen the ugly duck and smoker. 
If you haven't seen that in the video yet, go back and watch. You can see that up close and personal. We do actually a little bit of how-to with it. We got Corona Street. We've got our great sponsor that started this channel up for us, CSC Entertainment. And knives and other things up here. We had a microwave in here, but we're taking that one in the house because it's nice. And of course, if you go back and watch from the fall when, when uh, the monster died, this is our new gas grill. We haven't even used it yet, but she's sitting here just waiting to get used too. So that's a bit of just a recap of what we have for equipment that we use. We don't have any big fancy remote controlled Bluetooth sit on your computer and run your meats perfectly every time smokers. We don't have any of that. Nothing I've got in here. I think this was the most expensive thing I have in here. I think this cost me $129 on sale. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. We never not buy on sale. <laughs> I always buy on sale. You guys will know. If you don't know that yet, you'll learn that. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we use for equipment. A lot of stuff is used. A lot of stuff is stuff nobody wanted anymore. But we've made it into something that's our own, and we love this stuff. And we, we cook with it all the time. So let's go check on the food, shall we? Mm -hmm. So we'll go over here to King Kong over. And by the way, I didn't mention why we call this green. green <laughs> why we call this grill King Kong? It's real simple. It's not that big. It doesn't big and fuzzy and look like an ape or anything like that. The cover that we bought for this thing after we purchased it literally says King Kong on it. So it just adopted the name King Kong. Oh my Take goodness! There. How's that looking? Bacon. That is some some smoked, thick cut bacon and I think I'm gonna pull this off in just a few minutes and we're gonna do something a little special with this we'll show you in a little bit in the meantime let's go check our other smoker out I gotta get my gloves for that it's a yeah, that one's dangerous yeah let's take a look at what we got going on over here in the vertical it's too tall for me it is a little tall there check and look at that check a look, a look. something fell over over there yeah something oh that's just a paper towel that's okay so here's what we got going on. You saw the chorizo we uncased earlier. That's cooking up just, just like brown and hamburger. His <laughs> smoke gets in your eyes. It's directly going into my face right now. <laughs> but that's just about done. So we're probably going to pull that off in about another 5-10 minutes. Following me. There's the uh, kielbasas. And they're starting to split and take on the color. They look great. And I'm going to move this pan out of the way so you can see down inside. I'm not going to take the rack off. You can take a look down there and you can see those spark shanks or those blue shanks that we've got in that. I can't in blow it and see. I can't blow all the smoke out the way either. Here, let's just open the door see if we can get some of the smoke out of the way. Oh my god. Well, anyway, they're taking on a nice color. You can see they're cooking well. You can hear them dripping and sizzling down onto the fire. Everything's coming along just as it should. It's going to along a little faster than it should, which is a great thing. Oh, I need to get out of that. Yeah, no. you get out of there. That's all right. You don't want to put me in an asthma attack. No, no, asthma is not a good thing for you. So we'll wrap these things up, get some things off the fire. They're going pretty fast, so I'm happy about that. Um, we'll reconfigure, reset, move on to the next step. Here we are, we're back. So our bacon has been taste tested. It's just about where we want it to be. It's got a little bit of chew left to it. Just a tiny bit. And the reason we're leaving a little bit of chew, you'll see shortly. Or longly, depending on how you cut it. Now we'll just pull that off quick. We're also going to pull our kielbasa off and probably our um, chorizo because they're about done. Get in there, bacon. We like you to be in the pan, bacon. And we'll set that aside for right now. Processing. All right, let's get the heat in there. And in the meantime, let's check this guy out. Open the doors. Oh, We're taking the chorizo off, right? Yeah, I'm gonna pull the chorizo off. I think that's about done. Doesn't look done. Yeah. Looks nice, doesn't it? Oh, and that's gonna be great about that too. All these different meats in there, they're gonna be different flavors of each other. You're learning, yes. See? Like the chorizo flavor. Exactly. The chorizo's got a little bit of spice to it. And that'll go along with the sweet of the, <laughs> of the, of the, of the peanut apple that we're gonna put in. So let's put that over here for right now. Okay, that's really flipping hot. And we're gonna pull the kielbasa off. Oh, baby. Oh, oh Mel's going to be happy when she's oh, here. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we'll have a special guest for you later today that gets the taste test. Depending on how soon we get this done, she's not going to be here for a couple more hours, but we'll introduce you to her if we get if the she opportunity. Wants to. Yeah, she wants to be on camera. There's our kielbasa. We'll let that rest for just a minute. And we'll take a peek at our shanks. Look at, I'll take a look at that. Here, let's get this out of the way because we don't need this anymore. 
Not right now. Take they're a look at those. Now you can see, look at the juice that's in there. One thing nice about these ickier cuts of meat that nobody usually wants to use for anything except for stew, and I can feel there's still quite a bit of firmness to these, so they're going to need some more time. We want to try to soften them up as best we can before we do the next step of them. Yeah, it'll be hard to cook. Yeah, but we still want to cook those a little bit longer, so. Uh, but there, you can smell them. You can smell that nice beefy, steaky kind we of smell. We don't have smell of vision though. Well, okay, so here's a challenge for all you brainy farts out there. In, in, invent smell of vision <laughs> Guys like me can help uh, make people like you happy. Look at that. That's a nice looking chorizo, isn't it? So our stew today, stew or stew. You know what we need? Hmm. You know you know what we need? Hmm. Is that big enough sniff? You know what we need? You guys might remember this one if you've watched all of our videos so far. Uh, over the winter time when it was icky, we did a knife restoration. Okay. Part of the reason we did that knife restoration video is because we had a knife and it need restoring. Came out of a storage unit for... You get out of there! I'm trying to move it out of your oh. way. <laughs> I thought you were stealing the bacon. No, um, I thought but, about it though. But the other reason is, is we wanted a knife and we needed something to do over the winter time. This came out of a storage unit, was beat to death. You can still see that there's some flaws and imperfections in it, but it's mine now and it's cool and I can use it. So literally we're gonna make these as you do with most stews. Holy moly, is that ever hot. Oh gee, maybe because it came, off. came off the smoky. Yeah. <laughs> but we like bite-sized pieces. Nah, don't do it yet, it's too hot. Oh. It's too hot. <laughs> want a bite. <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead. Be careful, it's gonna be hotter than blazes. Oh my god, it's crunchy. I tried telling you it was... It's crunchy. Well, yeah. Texture. The casing on it made a nice, good crunch yep. work. And it's all creamy in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like, a, you don't talk, you just, just, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up into bite-sized pieces to go into our stew. We're going to save this for something a little different. We've got two projects we're doing today, so we're going to show you the step in the middle that will go into both projects. We'll get this cut up. Uh, we'll get the chorizo out of the way, and we'll get down to the next one. Here we go again. Ready? <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to be putting this pineapple together, and we're going to smoke the pineapple. And that pineapple is going to have a little brown sugar and a little bit of seasoning put on it. And we're going to put that in the grill for about, oh, probably five to ten minutes. And we've got a lot of pineapple to do. So you can check that out right there. Look at all that pineapple, huh? That's gonna be fantastic stuff. And we put our our brown sugar on a plate here with a little bit of the seasoning on it. Uh, we're gonna put that on the grill, low uh, offset away from the heat, just so it doesn't burn, because we don't wanna have burnt pineapple. Nobody likes burnt pineapple, right? Right. So we just pat a little bit of that uh, brown sugar on right there. And it's hard to get it to stick sometimes. So sometimes we've gotta reach the bottom and use those instead. But you'll see almost instantly how the brown sugar kind of starts to glaze right away and melt into that pineapple. And that's going to give us a fantastic flavor. So you just uh, check a couple of these out here. In case you missed the first one, we'll show you another one there. There we are. All right. And, you know, since we got 65 of these, we did have 66, but unfortunately we had to taste test one first, right? That's very important. Taste testing is the key to making this work. So we had a taste test one. We're down to 65, but you can see here, we can pat it down a little bit, get some of that brown sugar sticking, put it away from the heat, just like we're doing, a little bit of juice on there to help it stick. And we probably won't show you each and every one of these because, you know, I mean, we'd have a two hour long video if we tried to show you 65 pineapples getting brown sugared, right? So what we'll do is we will just give you a little bit of fast forward here, give you a little montage of how we do this. And in five, ten minutes, however they look when they're done, you'll see a little bit of color starting to come into them. They will uh, show up nicely. So check this out. Here we go. Okay, so you can see the pineapples have glazed up nicely, maybe 10 minutes on the grill. Not a big deal. We give them a little bit of num-num wood so they got a little smoke flavor to them. They should be amazing. So now just to make sure that we did them correctly, 
taste tester when you're done with your bacon. Please test the pineapple. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Better than the first piece yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See guys, it's... <laughs> if you come here, I'll put you to work helping us do things, but to get to taste things like this and not have to make them yourself. Pineapple's my favorite fruit. Right. Mine's Elton John. <laughs> but, you know, to each their own. My hand on Mac. That's not nice. I shouldn't say that. We love Elton John's music. He's an amazing person. Obviously, he got knighted Sir Elton John by the Queen of England, so he's... Wait, um, obviously, he's got to be top-notch. And the music he's made for decades is something wrong. Bad joke. I apologize for it. Gosh. All right, so we're going to reconfigure this grill to do something else for the stew. In the meantime, we're going to get that out of the way. We'll reconfigure this. We'll get the vertical set up for that and move forward. Ooh. So here's our shanks and stew meats and things, whatever you want to call them. You can see they're pretty well done. Well done. Where our goal here is we're going to salvage this meat off of there. And we're going to use this for our stew. So we're literally just going to cut it into little bite-sized pieces, just like everything else that should be in a stew. Yeah, that's nice stuff. Got good color, got a little smoke. Oh, great. Well, you better, it's going to be chewy yet, but if you want to taste test it, you're welcome to. <laughs> Here, tell you what, let me just cut out this little bit. God dang it. I know, it's a terrible thing. It's, that's fatty. You don't want that one. Here, we'll try that one right there. There you go. See what you think of that. <laughs> Amazing as always. It tastes like beef, don't it? Mm -hmm. Where's the beef? Right here. Tastes like a steak. Yeah. Tastes like a good steak. It's it's like I said, I would never cook a steak this done. No, God no. But for what we're doing today, this will be just fine. So you can see what we're gonna do, and of course, uh, we're gonna put. Believe it or not, we're gonna use those bones too. In the broth. Well, we're gonna put them in the stew to get mm -hmm. the flavor, get the extra meat to fall off the bones, that kind of thing. Now, this is a this is actually a stew bone or a stew bone, if you will. You can see that's still really tough. Like it wouldn't be if we smoked it for like six hours, so we get meat off the bone kind of a thing going on. So we're probably gonna just try to cut away what we can, and we'll put the rest in with the stew and let it fall off the bone on its own. Gave her a bone of her own. Like that was uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Sorry. All right, so we'll get this cut up, and then we're gonna get, we got the grill reconfigured. It's warming up right now, and we'll show you the next step to our stew. Okay, so the next step in our stew, before we go any farther, is we're gonna cook some more bacon. Now, you guys have seen El Cabong if you've watched other videos of ours. If you haven't, it is a 20 inch high carbon, 14 gauge steel, I believe it is. I can't remember now. Anyway, <laughs> We've got some thinner bacon. We made the thick bacon earlier. We're going to show you something with that in just a little Try bit. Try not eat it all. <laughs> if there's any left. But in the meantime, a lot of people like to fry their bacon in a pan. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with doing that. So this is thinner, regular sized bacon. So we're just going to throw this in uh, El Cabong here. Falling apart. Yeah, well, it's cheap bacon, and that's okay because we're looking for flavor. You know, if I was making BLTs and stuff, I'd probably get a little bit better cut of bacon, but this is gonna be all right. For what we're doing, this is going in stew, so. You should pour some of that pineapple juice in there. You know, I think I might do that. That's a heck of an idea. Yeah, but make it all juicy. Make it all nice and juicy, like. So aren't you gonna like chop that stuff up anyway? Yeah. Yep, that's why we don't care what it looks like. Because mm -hmm. it's all gonna come out tasting great. So if you're one of those purists and says, well, I gotta cook it in a pan. Okay. Here's well, your pan. There's your pan on the grill. There's your opportunity. Here's your sign. Here's your sign. Now this is some pretty cruddy bacon, but it was on sale, so. And again, we're not looking for presentation necessarily at this point. We're looking for flavor, which this obviously will have. And we're looking for cooking. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's our bacon. We'll show you that when it's done. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, reconfigure a little bit. And then we'll show you what we're going to do with the thick bacon. All right, so just in case, just in case, where's Justin? Just in case you need something else to make when you're doing something like this and have an atrocious amount of pineapple like we did. And let's face it, it was $2 for a little can. It was $6 for the monstrosity. So I bought the $6 one. Check this out. You want to, the way to a woman's heart is through her stomach. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. 
Bonus footage! Woo! No, we actually gotta cut them in half. They're too this big. Is thick bacon, so we're gonna trim it. Oops. No, oh, no. One for you. Oh, no. Oh, no, one for you. Can't remember stay on there, though. <laughs> well, you can use different techniques to do that. It's gonna get tight. <clears throat> I'm just gonna make one to show you, and then we'll make more later. As always. As always. But my daughter says, Dad, can you do bacon on the pineapple? Yes. Pineapple's my favorite fruit, and I love bacon. Bacon's my favorite fruit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, so check that out. We're going to take that pineapple wrapped in bacon. We've got the bacon cooking in there. We're just going to set him right in there, give him a few minutes. And then we'll have her taste test it and see if she drops the camera <laughs> or not. <laughs> Come back. Here we, go, here we go with the stew. Time to start assembling our stew. We're going to be cooking the stew. Stew is going to get cooked in El Cabong today. Got our bacon grease left in there. You've seen us use the mini potatoes before a thousand times. We're just going to throw them in there and get them started, okay? So we'll give them, you know, 10 minutes or so. Get them cooked down in the bacon grease. Pineapple juice. Yeah, yeah, we should add a little pineapple juice. We don't have anything done yet, Oh, yeah. Oh, it's gonna sizzle. Get that off the grill. Yeah. So those will take probably, you know, like I say, about 10 minutes or so. We'll cook them up. It's like a soft part of our stew we're making. Go over there. This is not gonna be a pot of stew. That might help. This thing works great as a smoker. It really holds its temperature well. So you want to try some meat? Here, meat. Yeah, Ma. <laughs> Take a little piece of this. This is actually stew meat that I smoked for about an hour and a half. It's a little chewy yet because we're going to cook it more, but... You know how tough, how what terrible, you think? How terrible stew meat usually is. It tastes like a steak, doesn't well, it? Well, I'll get back in. Yeah, you got work. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have it done probably by the time you get done, so. Yeah, taters going. Now, as you've seen throughout the video, we've been making other things too. We've been making the bacon. We're going to cut that up and put that in here. The stew meat's going to go in here. Um, I forgot what else. Oh, there's going to be some of that pineapple. That's going to go in there. And we're going to add the chorizo. And probably some pineapple juice to give it a little bit of um, liquid to render down as we're cooking it. Right. So yeah, there's are just nicely coming along, not too bad. And golden. Add a little pineapple juice in there. Yeah, the outsides will get golden pretty quick, but the insides will get that 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 potato squish. Mm -hmm. mm, you know. The mush potato. Yeah, mush potato. That's it. The mush potato. We're going to tell you, that'll take probably a good 10 minutes to get that, but these will be nice. We're probably going to add a little more liquid to this just to keep them from getting too dark on the outside. You know, kind of steam them as we go along as well, that kind of thing. In fact, I think I'll throw a little bit in there now. I think I'll even know. we got to get our bacon cut up yet. Just a little more green apple juice. Please take it. Can you reuse everything you can? I try to use everything I can. It saves money and makes things taste good. All about it. Now our grill is sitting at a little bit of a slant. Everything runs that way, so we'll push everything that way. Yeah. And I think I'm going to throw these bones in at this time. Just the bones so far. We don't. Maybe I'll throw Why them. not? Because I want that meat to get cooked down too. We want that to get as tender as it can be, and it'll get more tender the longer it cooks. So we'll throw it in. All that steam will help. <laughs> exactly. Extra juice, extra flavor, extra, extra read all about it. <laughs> and there we are. There's our, there's our beef that's in there. Nice beef. And you know, to be honest with you, when I was, I was coming up with this idea in my head over the last few days, I didn't plan on using this, these beef shanks and things. Um, when I went to the store to pick up the last few minute ingredients that I needed, I went by the clearance section and saw these being close to date, like they needed to be cooked or frozen within the next few days. I said, you know what? 
If we got three meats in the thing and it's going to be good, <laughs> four meats will just be better. Exactly. Right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Show of hands. Who's got it? Who says I'm right? Show your hands and the aim. Yeah. So there we are. So our meat's going to get warmed up again, get that rendered a little bit, get some of that meat to peel off those bones that we threw in there. The mascot's going to have a field day because I'm going to give him one of them bones we've done. Um, he likes bones. And there, that is safe for your dog. I didn't think cooked bones were. Yeah, no, they're fine. It's, is it cooked chicken bones? You can't give them any chicken bones. No turkey bones, nothing like that. Anything that's a hollow bone, mm. never want to give to your dog. Because they'll splinter and they'll get them in their stomach. He's whining. And, yeah, because he wants to go in. Trust me, if I gave him one of these now, he would never leave the yard. <laughs> maybe he should. Yeah, maybe. You shut him up for a while, huh? Yeah, look at that. That's some nice juices, some bacon grease around there. There we go, yeah. We've got a special video planned for him, actually. Yes, we do. But no surprise. No, That's all no I'm sneak, saying. No sneaky peeping. Okay, let's check out this guy. That one's going right. Yeah, right. Okay. Should I cut it? No. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're fine. So, again, we'll come back. When we start adding more ingredients to this, and you can see what that's gonna be like. Once the taters are done, we'll add more stuff. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, so the taters for the stew are getting nice and brown, a little bit done there, the meat's cooking around. So, a little bit more bonding adhesive for this dish. We're gonna add some beer, maybe a half a can, or maybe a little less, because I'm gonna Quality check. All right, quality check, everything's just so good. Um, yeah, so we got that. We're gonna add, we got some peanut apple here from our earlier bits we were doing. We're gonna throw in the peanut apple. Oh, splash me. Oh, I'm sorry. So we'll put some pineapple in there. That'll be nice. We're gonna get some of that, some fresh pineapple that we didn't smoke just to give you a mix of flavors a little bit. We got some leftover oh, brown sugar from when we coated these. So we'll throw a little bit of that in there just cause we don't like the way it's more flavor better. More flavor better. Some more pineapple. Just because we like pineapple. Okay. One for you. One, one for you, one for the dish. One, <laughs> for one, me. For, one for the dish. <laughs> there we go. There's some pineapple. Mm -hmm. And we got our bacon that we cooked in the pan earlier. We'll throw in the bacon. Yeah, we cut that up a little bit, just kind of a rough chop, just to, just to mix it up a little bit. And of course, last but not least. We've got our chorizo and our kielbasa. There we are. Oh, look at that juice in that kielbasa. Holy moly. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. All right. So now we got some stuff. Oh, hey, we forgot something. The broth? You remember what we forgot? No. Well, if you remember what I forgot, you wouldn't have to. I think we need like a little more juice. We need a little more juice. So what should we use for more juice? More leftovers. More leftovers. More peanut apple juice. Ouch, damn, this can is terrible. You know, this kind of right. reminds me of that uh, Cajun are. video we did. Go like check it out. A little bit like the Cajun video. If you have, if you like Cajun food and you haven't seen that video that we've made yet, go check that baby out. All right, so we've got some juice in there. Now what that'll do is that'll help the flavors mix together. It's also going to render that meat down. You know, see how we still got the bones, a little meat on them. That'll help cook those out. The flavors all mix together. We're going to let that juice cook down so we don't have much juice left in it. Even though it's truly going to be like a stew, it'll be more like a hot dish. We'll see what happens. Again, this is something I'm just making up in my head as I go along. We're going to see how it goes. So, that's going. That's going. Yeah. Now we just sit and wait. We're going to give that probably 10, 15 minutes, maybe half an hour. We'll stir it occasionally as we go along. If it needs a little more juice in it. We're going to throw more pineapple in it just to recycle. And uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Taste testing is important, so you'll see that too. So we're about probably 30 to 40 minutes into where we added everything to this uh, to this cook all together. You can see the pineapple just coming apart at the seams. A lot of that stew meat that was real tough is starting to peel off, but check this one out. This bone right here has really been doing a good job. Take a look at that. See that? Well, most of the meat's come off that. It's starting to peel off the bone. Look at that. That's Just a little. Yeah, we're going to give... <laughs> watch this. You want to... You guys want to see true love? Check this out, Scooby. This is our mascot. Here, you want some? <laughs> no. You want that? Oh, that's hot, huh? It's probably a little hot for him at the moment. Here, eat that. Eat this one. There you go. Good. So that bone is safe to give to your dog. That's just a beef bone. That's no big deal. He's gonna take that and play with that for probably a while, and it'll get him get him to quit barking. See you later, oh. buddy. 
<laughs> Where are you going? He's going to go all hide there and, and take care of that. But uh, more importantly, let's take a look at this here. <laughs> what do you mean? That's very important. <laughs> well, that's true. That is the mascot, so that's important. But you saw that meat starting to come off that bone nicely. The other ones are getting there and they're not quite there yet. But I think we're going to throw in some more pineapple. What do you guys think? I agree. We need more. You can see that some of this beef that's in here is just starting to come apart, and that's what we want. But at least that's for this dish. Let's add some more pineapple. Put the pineapple in the, in pineapple. the coconut. I say just put the whole thing in. Yeah? You yeah. Don't want them All right. Mm -hmm. More later. There, how about that? There's more pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> pineapple is good pineapple. Yeah, that's right. More is good. Hey, we've got a couple other things. Then we're going to add. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just one, one's just for me and one's just for, you know, whatever. But uh, what? according to what the British guy I heard on the radio says, it's Worcestershire. Cheshire or Cheshire? Cheshire or Cheshire? Anyway, got a couple of tablespoons left in the bottle, so we're just going to pop that in there. Worcestershire. It's awesome. We'll pop that in there just for a little extra flavor. And then, of course, the one that only I like, but the rest of y'all can pick these out because there might be somebody else that likes these too. Just some fresh mushrooms that are pre sliced. Why we're going to. You're ruining it. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, Texture, flavor, bulk it up so it's not just meat, even though the primary focus of this is meat and That's pineapple. That's why I said throw the pineapple in yeah, we, Well, we threw the pineapple in. You didn't pineapple. throw throw it. All right, well, that's true. You got, you got a little four. Yeah. We added a little more pineapple, or a lot more pineapple. We've added some more mushrooms, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. We got a little bit, of, you can see we got some juice left in the bottom there. We're okay with that because that's helping to steam that meat a little bit. To Pineapple's it. cooking too. It'll yep. oh, yeah. take yep. the juice out of my bit. Absolutely. So that's looking pretty good. We want to let that go a little longer just because we want to get that meat nice and tender. It's getting closer, but got a little ways to go yet. We'll put the lid back on, give it another, I don't know, maybe a half an hour, see how it goes. It's coming out nice though. All right, so you can see things are darkening up quite a bit. I think we're about done with this dish, so what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little taste test. There's a piece of that, and a piece of that. Get a little bit of chorizo. Ooh, hot. Holy cow. I'm blowing mine off first. <laughs> the pineapple means everything in this dish. Mm. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dish this up, get it in Tupperware. Some will stay here in our fridge. Some's gonna go to friends and feed uh, the masses like we do. Thanks for joining us. You know the routine to subscribe, to like the videos, to share the videos, to hit the notification button, hit all notifications. So you know each and every time Regular Guy Barbecue comes on to give you another fantastic adventure of cooking or God knows what we're gonna get into next. Thanks for joining us, everybody.